guys, Pastor Preston is my name. I'm so excited to come your way today. So I want to talk to you about this long drag issue about grace and law in the sense that you find a lot of people saying things like the grace gospel is causing people to sin and that's why they don't like it or they, they don't want to preach it. And I've seen another group of people who said things like, well, we have to bring a balance to the grace gospel. We quite agree, but we have to bring a balance to the grace gospel. Okay, so first, let me start from the second to the first. You don't bring a balance to the grace gospel. All you need to do is to teach it correctly. If you teach it correctly, it is balanced in itself. Trying to balance it will mean that you are mixing grace and law, and that will make a wreck. Okay, and Paul warned about it in First Timothy chapter number one of certain people who are trying to make a mix of certain stuff. Okay, that's the first thing I want to to see, which was the second. And then let's talk about the first, right that I mentioned, where you see a lot of people saying things like the grace gospel, you know, is causing a lot of people to sin. First, people have been sinning before the grace gospel, okay? And they will still continue to sin after the grace gospel. It's important that you understand. Watch this. Second Corinthians chapter number four, if our gospel be hid, is being hid to them who the God of this world has blinded their eyes, that they will not see the glorious light of the gospel, okay? Now, so people will not do right or will continue wrong, not because of the grace gospel, but because Satan has blinded their eyes. That's very important that you understand. Next, I also want to go straight to say, because a lot of time people say things like, because the gospel supposedly, right, seem to look like it approves of sin, right? So, uh, we need to deal with it with caution. Now, that gospel does not approve of sin. In Romans chapter number 6, when they said, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer dearly? So, it does not approve of sin in any way. It only just shows you forgiveness for sin. And that's very important that you understand. Okay? So, when you don't understand a thing, instead of castigating it, it is important that you investigate it correctly and thoroughly and most likely you'll find the truth in the expression as against you judging a thing from uh, ignorance and then making a mess of a great thing that Jesus Christ brought. It is important that you understand that it was Jesus who offered grace and grace in itself is a part of Christianity because firstly, before Jesus, it was Judaism. It was Jesus who brought Christianity and when Jesus brought Christianity, he offered it in grace. He says grace and truth came by Christ in John chapter number one. Grace and truth. That is grace. That is truth. Okay, they are not two different things. The and there is the word kaya. Grace, that is truth. Okay, truth is grace and grace is truth. Hallelujah. Very important. That's why I like to tell people a lot of time, I say grace is not just a message. Grace is a person. Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the person that we preach. Remember in Ephesians 4.20, it says, you have not well learned Christ. Okay? You have not well learned Christ. Christ is both a person. Okay? Very important that you understand that. So, grace gospel is not something that came to cause havoc in Christendom. Rather, it is something that came to help us to live right as Christians. Okay, as we proceed, I also want to make another expression. You know, some people will say things like, this uh, grace gospel in itself, you know, uh, it was Paul who brought it, and then even Peter warned against it. You know, Peter told us uh, to be careful of it. Some people have made a wreck out of their life uh, because of, the, of that and the rest of them. The first thing I want to say to you, anytime people make reference of things like that, go investigate the scripture, read it for yourself. So I'm going to read that scripture for you. That is in 2 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 16. Okay, I'm reading first from the Passion Translation. Now let me do the King James first before the Passion Translation. So the King James says, As also in all his episodes, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Take note, it says they are hard to be understood. He didn't say they cannot be understood. Next now says, which they that are unlearned and unstable wreck. These, those that are unlearned. The word unlearned here, right, very clear from the Greek is the word amates, which means ignorant. And then the word unstable is the Greek word asterictox, which means not firm. Okay, so it says those who are ignorant, toss not firm, 
okay they had made a wreck now hold on you're going to see something that is interesting here he now says as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction so it is not only in the writings of paul that this happened it also happened in other scriptures it's important that you understand these things clearly so you just cherry pick it you just go pick a part and then you want to use it to fire paul right as against understanding it correctly no you got to understand it correctly this is very powerful he said they also do that to other scriptures so let me read it on the passion translation that will give you a clear expression right look what the passion translation says it says consistently speaking of these things in all his letter referring to paul peter referring to paul he says even though he writes some concepts that are overwhelming to our understanding perfect then it says which the unlearned and unstable love to twist to their spiritual ruin as they do other scripture so the unlearned and unstable not only twist the writings of Paul, they twist also the writings of other scriptures. Okay, it's important that you understand that. So sometimes when you want to give some concept and explain some things, be careful how you, you know, just take it out of context or shoplift it and explain it wrongly. Okay, so people will always make a mess of scriptures. They will always make, once they are unstable, once they are you know, they are on land, they will always make a wreck out of scriptures. It's important that you understand that. You just need to do the right thing. So in trying to correct the, you know, correct what's going wrong, be careful not to create another wrong. It's very important because that always happens that you uh, want to correct a wrong, you now create another wrong as against understand how to do the right thing the right way. Glory to God. So with or without uh, the grace gospel, firstly, you need to understand that people will always sin, right? That's it, right? People have been sinning before the grace gospel and they'll still sin before the grace gospel. But one thing you need to understand that the grace gospel did is the fact that it opened hypocrisy. I'm telling you, if a gospel makes you now begin to sin, that means you were hiding to sin before or you were not sinning out of fear, which of course expresses what we call the work expression, which you found with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, okay? Right, that's what happens, right? When people begin to do wrong because of the grace gospel, then they were not righteous in the first place. You need to understand it. Righteousness is a gift of God. It is not something we worked for, right? As a matter of fact, the scripture says that no man may boast. So what do we really do? We hang on what God had done. The Bible says we hang on it through faith. Romans chapter number uh, five, he tells us that we hang on it through faith, what the Lord had done. So that's, it's not a function of our work in any sense. That's very important that you understand. So if a particular gospel now begins to cause people to do wrong, then they were hypocrites in the first place. And I'll tell you the truth. Law brought a lot of people to become hypocrites. We've seen the storyline in scriptures before, and that's how it has always been. We're really good. So point will now be, right, because of that, some people say, well, I don't preach grace. I preach the law and the rest of them. Listen, the preaching of the law, the Bible told us, right, i would never helped anyone and will never help anyone. As a matter of fact, he said, uh, the law could not help anyone and then it was rendered useless. That's what the scripture said. So we cannot carry on in that character, right? We need to do what we have been asked to do correctly. So what are we supposed to preach? Are we supposed to preach sin? No, we don't preach sin. We preach the righteousness of God, right? So what are we supposed to do? It's important that you understand as a preacher, okay? And let me show you from scriptures, right? In uh, Second Corinthians chapter number five, right? Very clearly, he tells us in chapter number 18 right it says and all things are of god who had reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation 19 to wit god was in christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses unto them take note not imputing their trespasses unto them that's what a lot of people who do law want to do they impute their trespasses unto them he says and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation so we preach the word of reconciliation and not preaching imputing their trespasses unto them so when you tell somebody you are a sinner the sinner will die and all of all that stuff what are you doing you are imputing their trespasses unto them this is very important okay we tell them what god has done 
right? And how they can connect with what God has done and become free from sin. Glory to God. In Romans chapter number one, it says, Paul will say, right, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Notice it says it's the power of God unto salvation. He says the gospel has power to offer salvation. So what do we do? We preach the word of reconciliation and not necessarily sin. When we're sin conscious, we'll create more sinners. When we're righteousness conscious, we'll create more righteous people. Glory to God. This is very important, right? So we don't preach sin. Okay, well, we're going to be telling them to repent from their sins and the rest of them. No, not even even telling people to repent from their sins. It's important to understand that you understand that a Christian is not a sinner. Listen and listen very good. In Galatians chapter number six, you know, the scripture five, sorry, it tells you about something called the fruit of the spirit. Did you notice when he speaks uh, speak about the opposite, he didn't call it the fruit of uh, the flesh, right? As against the fruit of the spirit. He called one the works of the flesh and then he calls the other one the fruit of the spirit because a Christian cannot have the fruit of the flesh because he's dead to sin. He can only have the work of flesh. Take note of that. And in Hebrews chapter number six from verse number one, he says, let us move on to perfection. And then he said something very profound. Therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Take note, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead work. That means part of the foundational things that we teach people when they come in the faith is, is repentance from dead works. Take note, he called that work dead works. You see, he didn't say repentance from your sin. Rather, it says repentance from dead works. I know some of my wife try to say things like, Pastor Preston is just semantics. I, uh, you know, this the same thing, sin and all that stuff. No. If you are a good Bible theologian, if you are a good Bible student, you will understand the implication. When you call a Christian and says he has the fruit of unrighteousness or the fruit of, of sin, then you are trying to say that believer is still alive to sin. And Roman sister tells us very profoundly and clearly that a believer is dead to sin, right? He says, how shall he live any longer therein? Whether you see the fruit of that, that or not, he's already dead when he accepts Christ, when he believes in Jesus Christ, right, believes in, in, in the finished work of Christ, he is dead to sin. What you, you find that he does is the fact that he has not been renewed, right, in his mind by the teaching of the gospel. This is very important. So, we are righteous people, right, and we have no business with sin. We learn Christ and then we are empowered by the Spirit to do the right things of God. Oh, are you still there? So, that's exactly what we do. Not trying to want to use a wrong way to help people to become right. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. It doesn't work like that. You know, we say there's correctional center for people who are done wrong, right, and all this stuff. And I'm trying to ask, most especially in Africa, how many people have that place really corrected? Think about it. Because you need to understand that some of these things are spirits and Jesus dealt with the spirit for us. And then, of course, by the teaching of God's word, men are liberated. Men now come to the reality of what they truly are in Christ and then they work in that new reality. Glory to God. So the grace gospel was given to us and we stand by it and we continue in it and then we do the right stuff as the Lord has instructed. Glory to God. I hope this brings you some kind of blessing and I want you to use for good. Share it with a couple of people who have all this confusion so we can try to bless them. I know it's not very long and let it didn't give so much expressions like you know, I wanted it for maybe an hour to hour sermon. However, if you critically think about it and research with it, it will give you more light uh, by God's grace. Thank you and God bless you.